Hey everybody, welcome to Mrs. Barnes class. Mrs. Math teacher. I don't know, I'm a math teacher and we're gonna talk about math. My husband said I should start with a joke. So, how do you find Will Smith in a snowstorm? You follow the fresh prints. If you didn't get it, Google it. It's funny, I promise. All right, so today we are talking about adding rational numbers. First, we need to figure out what is a rational number. A few lessons back, we talked about rational numbers, and rational numbers are fractions and decimals that can be positive or negative. So basically, rational numbers are any number that you can really think of. Five, it's a rational number. 1.2, that's a rational number. 7.234, that's rational. Negative 7.234, that's a rational number. If you can write the number down and say, boom, that's it, that's a rational number. We're gonna learn how to add these today. So you've added decimals, you've added fractions, but what if one of them's negative? Then what do you do? The rules are basically the same for integers like they are for rational numbers. So we're gonna do the same thing, but tweak it just a little bit. First, we're gonna talk about decimals. So when we add decimals that are positive or negative, we have to treat these decimals like regular numbers. So we are going to, we're gonna find the bigger number. And when I say bigger number, I don't mean long number. I mean the biggest valued number, positive or negative, which one has the most amount of stuff. So like negative 1,000 is bigger than negative 1.0005. So we're gonna put the larger or biggest quotes because it's not actually the biggest on top. We also have to, what do we have to do when we work with decimals and we're adding? What's like the really big rule that we always have to think about? We have to line up the decimals. So when you have a decimal and a decimal, they have to be together because you want the ones place over the ones place. And you want the tenths place over the tenths place. So you wanna line those up so that the values match. And we're going to follow some integer rules. So don't forget integer rules. So remember with integers, the bigger number wins. So if you have negative five and you add two, you start at negative five on the number line and you would go up two spaces. So you'd end up at negative three. So let's try this out. If I have negative 523.2 plus 57.93. I don't know. I just made it up. First, which one is the bigger number? Which one has the most pieces to it? Negative 523 or 57.93? Which one is bigger? Which one has more people in it? Negative 523 has more negatives than 57. So this one is gonna be my big number that I put on top. So this one is gonna go on the bottom, but we have to line up those decimals. So if this is the ones place, this is the ones place, and they have to match. So this seven has to go underneath that three, and that decimal has to go under that decimal. And I'm adding 
Now we're going to follow our integer rules. For this, we're going to kind of pretend that the decimal is not even there. So we're going to put an imaginary zero right there. And we're going to work this problem out like this is 52,320. So if this was 52,320 and then 5,793. If we had those two numbers, one of them is negative, one of them is positive. This is a negative number, this is a positive number. And we're going to put them together in the same container. If I have 52,000 negatives and 5,000 positives, which group is bigger? The negatives or the positives? The negative group is much bigger. So my answer is going to be negative. Now when you put these two groups together, they don't get along, so they're going to start canceling each other out. And when we cancel each other out, we call that subtraction. So if I have 52,320 negatives and I have 5,793 positives, those 5,793 positives are going to knock out 5,793 negatives. So I'm going to subtract these. There's a little rule that you can remember to help you know when to add and when to subtract when you're dealing with integers. If they have the same sign, when you're adding rational numbers, if they have the same sign, you find the sum or add. If they have different signs, you find the difference or subtract. So this one we're going to add, this one we're going to subtract. And then you keep the sign of the bigger team. So since negatives were the bigger team, they keep the negative sign down there. So when I put these two groups together, I have to subtract because they had different signs. And I'm going to put them in the same container and they're going to cancel each other out. So when I subtract this like normal, I end up with negative 4, 6, 5, 2, 7. Stop. Where's the decimal go? It was one, two spaces from the right side. So if I came back into this problem and I put the decimal here and I put the decimal there, it stays in that same spot. Not there. Yes, there. That's good. So 465.27. Part two. Let's take a brain break. This part of the video is brought to you by Fudge Brownie M&Ms because, oh my gosh, they're so good. Try them. Alright, so now let's talk about fractions. None of the rules you've learned before go away. So you still have to have a common denominator. We still have to follow the rules when we make the fractions improper. And the same rules from integers apply. So we're going to take the sign of the bigger number. If they have the same sign, we're going to add them. If we have different signs, we're going to subtract them. So for these two, First thing I'm going to suggest, because it works every time, make all your mixed numbers improper fractions. I'm going to use that sign for numbers, so make the mixed numbers improper. And when we do that, you take the denominator we multiply it by the whole number, and then we add the numerator. Because you have one whole piece and then a half of a piece. So how many halves is that? If you have one whole and then one half, that's two times one plus one is three halves. 
you keep the bottom number and this stays negative. All right, what about this one? How would we do three and one third? You take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number, add the numerator. So this is three times three is nine plus one is 10. So this one is 10 thirds. So now that we have improper fractions, the next part about fractions, when we're adding or subtracting, they have to have a common denominator. So you have two and three. So if I have a two and a three, this is an easy way to find a common denominator. We're going to count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then we're going to count by threes. Three, six, nine. Oh, pause. We have sixes on the top and the bottom. So six is a common denominator. So if I wanted to rewrite these two fractions with sixes on the bottom, what did I have to do to the two to get to six? What did we multiply by here? That was by three. So two times three was six. And so if I multiply the two times three to get six, I have to do the three times three to get nine. And this was a negative, so it stays a negative. Now over here with the three, what did we do to the three to get to a six? What did we multiply by? Multiplied by two. So if I took this fraction and I double the bottom, I have to double the top too. So three times two is six. 10 times two is 20. And I'm still adding these two. Now that we have a common denominator, we look at the numerators only. The denominator is going to stay the same. Let's add this step. We found a common denominator. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add these like they're integers. We're going to look at the dots. So we're going to integer operation the numerators. So I've got negative 9 plus 20. And we keep the denominator. So negative 9 plus 20. If I am on a number line and I'm at negative 9 and here's 0 and I want to go 20 this direction. Where do I end up? Is it positive? Is it negative? You'd end up at positive 11. And so negative 9 plus 20 is positive 11 over 6. And the last thing you do is you're going to simplify your fraction or make it proper. Make it proper. So if I've got 11 over 6, how many times can 6 go into 11? I know that 6 times 2 is 12, but that's too much. So 6 times 1 is 6. So if I did 11 divided by 6, which is what this says, 11 over 6 means 11 divided by 6. I get 1, and that would be 5. Now I can pause here. This 5 becomes my numerator, and the 6 becomes my denominator. So 11 over 6 is equal to 1 and 5 6. I always like to go back and make sure I got my signs right. Did the bigger number 
keep its sign. Negative one and a half and positive three and a third. Which one of those is bigger and has more to it? The positive number does. So my answer here is going to be positive because the bigger number wins. All right, that does it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and ring the bell to get notifications. See you next time.